Welcome back, everyone. Today's message is a message to all of you, all of the anti-dog people. Some of my videos are just stories. Some of my videos are targeted towards the dog nuts. And this one is for you. If you're listening and you support our cause, this one's for you. So, I could personally say, um, some, some of us might not really believe that this movement that we're part of can change things. We complain, we bounce ideas off each other, we make these videos, but where is this really even going to go? Can we really defeat this culture and fight for any real change at all? For some people who make these videos, and you know, I'm not condemning you or your reason, for whatever reason you make videos or you watch these videos, we're glad to have you here. But I want to get serious. Do you really believe that we can beat this culture and fight for change? That's my message for today, and we're going to talk about it. This one's probably going to be a long one. So, get comfortable. I'm here to tell you I believe we can. In this, com in this PowerPoint, I'm going to draw some comparisons between dog ownership and other things that were once common in life. Things that the majority of the population was doing, was normal, was studied, and, and even given, given a thumbs up from doctors as safe and part of normal life that's a gotta really emphasize normal life things that are no brainers as harmful in today's society that were once recommended popular and socially acceptable we're gonna put that in bold socially acceptable let's break this down that's what I do here on this channel. I break things down. And I'm about to break it down and serve it up. Uh, how popular is dog ownership and why? Now, the we're going to underline that. Why? There are currently over 76 million dogs in the United States. Compared to 58... 0.3 million cats. The dog is by far the most popular animal. Now, when you hear that number, I don't know about you, but it doesn't put a smile on my face. It probably doesn't put a smile on your face. As people who hate and despise the sin of dog nuttery, there are countless mentally ill level 5 dog nuts who value the life of their dog over the life of any human. And even if the dog mauled or killed a child, they will fight for the dog to be saved from being euthanized. We have to deal with this fact day in and day out, and we are by far the minority. And even the people who don't own dogs, they don't view things like we do, or they're unaware of the facts, even if they're indifferent. With a number like that, how is it possible that we could ever even put a dent in dog culture? Reduce the number of people who own dogs, change the way society looks at dogs. Right now, we are just a handful of YouTube channels, forums on Reddit, a couple websites hanging in the wind. If the dogs in the United States were evenly distributed amongst the households, that equates to approximately 57% of the population being dog nuts. But we are vastly outnumbered. We are the minority of the minority. So a really good question that has been asked time and time and time again by the anti-dog community is why are dogs so popular? Why does everyone want a dog, love dogs, enough to the point that they would betray their own species for a filthy animal that licks its genitals, begs for food, spreads diseases, barks non-stop? <coughs> My voice is getting worn out here from all these videos. They bark non-stop for no reason. Like, why do you want this thing in your home? Why would you want to put up with that? 
The answer for a lot of people is because propaganda works. The definition of propaganda is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular partic can't say that word particular political cause or point of view. Dogs are betrayed by the media, by websites, by doctors, by friends, from every angle of so many people's lives as family members. A loving, loyal, harmless companion, oh, they're, they're harmless companion creatures who can do no wrong. If you see something enough times, you will become conditioned to believe it, or at the very least be desensitized to it. It is believed amongst dog owners that because a dog is not intelligent enough to know the difference between right and wrong, it can never be wrong. The dog is never the variable, only the human behavior is the variable, and if the dog attacks, then it was you did something wrong. Your behavior was wrong, because the dog is a consistent variable. Completely not true. But you always hear that. Dogs are innocent. If a dog attacked, it didn't know any better. It was an accident. Don't put the dog down. It's not their fault. Give it a second chance. It just needs the right home. Your home maybe just wasn't the one. Your child upset the dog. We need to rehome it. And then if it bites again, then maybe we'll think about euthanizing it. But probably not. You know, with all the no-kill shelters. Let's break it down even farther. Like I said, breaking things down is what I do best. Why does anyone do anything? Now that might seem like a loaded question, but bear with me here. Almost all the things we do in life are to either be safe, be happy, or both. There are other things that we as organisms have wired into us as important, like reproducing. But for the most part, everything we do, we start, we do to work towards happiness, security, wealthiness, survival, in general, and doing things that are positive trigger a dopamine response in your brain. The brain's reward system is a brain circuit that causes feelings of pleasure when it's turned on by something we enjoy like eating good food or being in love. Wherever, whenever this reward circuit is activated, our brain notes it, that it's something worth, something important is happening. It's worth remembering and it's worth repeating. Right? We want to do it again. When a dog nut pets a dog, he or she is pressing the button in their brain. You're going to press that button that says dopamine on it. We're going to press it. It's the same chemical that you get when you get an email. You get a text from your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, ba -ding! oh, I got a message. You get that message from your significant other, right? That's a great feeling. Good news. When you eat a big meal and you feel full, you get dopamine. When you see your loved ones, it's one of the main chemicals in your brain that is known as the feel good chemical. Dog owners view their dogs as a source of positive interaction. It pushes the same button, that dopamine button, it presses the same button that gives reward chemicals as if they were interacting with children. It's ingrained into their DNA to care for something smaller than them, something that is basically helpless without them. But all these dog nuts will refer to their dogs as fur babies. So the need for interaction is there but they pick the dog instead of a child. So let's go, uh, let's do some other things. Uh, what's something else that pushes the dopamine button? If you're thinking ahead with me, you may know where I'm going with this. This will be the main point of my comparison, even though there are others. This one I feel draws the most similarity. So not so long ago, there was something else that was uh, socially acceptable in public places, restaurants and bars, uh, the home, pretty much everywhere else. It was condoned by doctors claiming to soothe your throat. I could use a, a throat soothing right now. Protect against throat irritation and coughing. Up to 68% of the adult population did it at one point in time. 
it was backed by the science of the day. We know now that it is linked to 480,000 deaths a year, including 41,000 by secondhand exposure. That equates to 1,300 deaths per day. It has been analyzed to contain 7,000 different chemicals, more than 70 of those being directly linked to cancer, heart disease, COPD, and a myriad of other problems. You guessed it. Now, if you're going to ask me, am I really going to make this comparison between cigarettes and dog ownership? The answer is absolutely yes. You better believe I am, and I'm going to make a really good hard-hitting point, and you're going to be impressed. Cigarettes are the perfect example of something that was at one point in time even more popular percentage-wise than dog ownership currently is today. The cigarette, when smoked, releases nicotine. Nicotine, or well, it releases a whole bunch of chemicals, but we're going to focus on this one. Nicotine acts in the brain by stimulating the adrenal glands to release the hormone epinephrine, which is adrenaline, and by increasing levels of the chemical messenger dopamine. What are some things that dog nuts say about dogs, right? The oxytocin myth? You pet your dog and uh, it releases the love hormone, the cuddle hormone. They use dogs to reduce anxiety. Dogs make us more social. They're good for your heart. They make you more attractive. If you're a man and you have a dog, you're more likely to pick up a girl. They're going to want to pet your dog and you might get her number. These things are all backed by science, according to dog nuts. Uh, cigarettes were chemically formulated to be more addictive than regular tobacco. Like, regular tobacco has been smoked for hundreds of years. But besides being addictive, in order to get 68% of a population to do something, it can't just be addictive. It has to be socially acceptable. It has to be enjoyable and viewed as enjoyed. It has to be readily available. It helps if it's addictive. It helps if it's backed by doctors and by science. There were commercials for it, even on children's TV shows. Like, you, if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, you see uh, Fred and Barney, Flintstone, they're, they're smoking cigarettes. If you go on YouTube, you can uh, find the cigarette commercial. They're smoking Winston's, and they talk all about how it has more flavor and, it, and uh, more puffs. Like, I've even seen it. Uh... From the time that they were kids, people were subjected to the idea that tobacco is enjoyable. Tobacco is socially acceptable. The negative side effects were plausibly deniable. The tobacco companies did everything they could to condition people to seeing cigarettes in movies, in commercials, being connected to a good time, like the working man, those who lived a life of luxury. The propaganda was real and it was everywhere. You can't have a normal life without cigarettes. If you condition a child from the time they are young that this is normal life, they will grow up believing it. They will need to have their image of normal life completely reformed in order to see life without that item. Today, you still see cigarettes in music videos and stuff like that. But cigarette smoking has declined from those numbers we saw earlier to just 13.7%. That's a lot better than 68%. So how in the heck did they do it? How did they get the rate for smoking down? On January 11th, 1964, Surgeon General Luther Terry announced that they had discovered a definitive link between cigarette smoking and cancer. We're going to go ahead, and I've never done this before, so hopefully it works. This day in history, January 11, U.S. Surgeon General announces definitive link between smoking and cancer. So the link had long been suspected. Evidence had always pointed to negative health effects from smoking. Like, like they knew about it, but they never really, you know, 
They never really connected the dots and came out and said it. This is bad. American cigarette companies spent uh, much of the next decade lobbying for the government to keep smoking legal, advertising reduced levels of tar and nicotine, uh, blah, 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 1958, a number of medical associations warned that tobacco use was linked with both lung and heart disease. Uh, despite all of this, nearly half of Americans smoked, and smoking was common in restaurants, bars, offices, and homes across the country. So, even though they kind of knew, you know, n no one ever really came out and said it and took really staunch action against it to say this is bad this is not socially acceptable it's not cool it's not healthy it's dangerous to your health 1970 November 1 warning labels stating cigarette smoking is dangerous to your health beginning November okay November 1 1970 uh, all the cigarettes had warning labels on them. The truth came out. That's what I want. I want on any form of dog commercial or any form of dog um, resource, shelters, they need to put a big sign outside that say dogs are dangerous. Dogs bite 5 million people every year. Adopt at your own risk. Something like that. So after 1970, it became open season on attacks against cigarettes. In 1970, Richard Nixon signed legislation that made cigarette commercials and ads on TV and radio illegal. So now we've got this great big driving force pushing to, to not, they, well, we can't make cigarettes illegal, but we're going to do everything that we can to chip away at the image of cigarettes. The, of course, the, the tobacco companies fought to keep cigarette ads legal, keep the publicity to a minimum, but the problem they faced wasn't just that the truth spoke for itself. Like, right, the truth always speaks for itself. Cigarettes and the negative side effects that they produced weren't enough to stop people from smoking. Like, people still smoke. We have all this, this, um, all this data and people still smoke in, in today's day and time. But the image that cigarettes carried stopped being attractive. The number of new smokers began to steadily decrease until hitting a record low in the year 2018. The positive image of a hard-working man who smokes, a tough, no-nonsense country cowboy who smokes, or of a posh, nightlife-loving celebrity who smoked wasn't beginning to fade, or was beginning to fade. Cigarette smoking wasn't as attractive anymore. People don't want to do something if they know that it's disgusting and it kills you and it drains your bank account. Like they might get into it for other reasons and they might get hooked, but but if I told you that you're going to spend $8 a day on something that can kill you and it tastes terrible and it makes you feel horrible and you didn't know what it was that I was talking about, and I asked you, hey, do you want this? You'd probably say no. So the connection. The connection, connection, connection. In order for us to get rid of this dog nut culture, we are all going to have to step out of our comfort zones. We can't just call names and rant about it to our circle of people here on YouTube and get in arguments. Also, presenting facts alone will not be enough. We have to strategically attack the image of being a dog nut with the facts and make people realize that what they are doing is super disgusting and harmful. We have to make it not cool anymore to be a dog nut. And it can never come to fruition unless we keep this movement up. What we are doing right now is revolutionary. We need to keep it up. We need to keep making a stink about it on social media. 
We need to call people out on their bull when they post these ridiculous lies. We do it with all the facts and research that can be backed up. If we spit the truth enough, we can make our presence felt through petitions, conversations, and these videos. We can reach people with these videos, and we can make a difference. The truth about dogs is that they're a drug to those who want interaction but hate humans. They're an addiction, a drain on society, a waste of money, a really big waste of money, a bigger waste of money than cigarettes, a health hazard to everyone around, and it takes mental conditioning to come to love and keep love for these animals that contribute nothing, nothing to their own existence. We don't like dogs because of these reasons. Not just because, oh, some dog scared you when you were a kid and now you have a phobia of dogs. You have sinophobia. You're the one with the disorder. No. We hate dogs because they spread diseases. They're a drain on our resources. They contaminate the water. They create noise pollution. They're destructive. And they attack humans for no reason. These are the facts. And they cannot be refuted by dog nuts with, oh, look at this picture. Does it look vicious to you? No. Get that crap out of here. Don't forget, as someone who isn't under the delusion of dog nuttery, it is your job to know the facts and statistics and be ready to give an answer at any point in time. At any point in time, you need to be ready to give an answer. So here's what you can do. Alright, I'm almost done. This is my third video of this night and my voice is starting to wear out. I'm, I'm, I'm about to put the final nail in the coffin here. Here's what you can do. Even if you don't make content, okay? Even if you don't make your own videos. There are many people who are out there and they're just like us. They hate the sound of dogs barking. They're sick of dogs violating them. Their instincts to hate dogs are there, but just like many of us, they're afraid of being demonized and hated by family and friends who are dog nuts. Most people aren't ready to speak out that they think all dogs, especially pit bulls and rottweilers and large vicious dogs, should be exterminated from society. Most people are not ready to sever social connections that they have to rid their own lives of dangerous interactions and annoyances with dogs. But I'll tell you right now, the way I came to join this movement was not that I just woke up one morning and created a channel, learned all these facts. I was listening every day to my neighbor's worthless pit bulls bark all day and not being able to call the cops because it was our it was our home that we were renting from family, and the owner was a nut, a nutcase. And we were afraid that he was going to come trash the house while we were gone if we called the cops on him. His pit bulls would bark all day. And one day, I came in from raking leaves. I went into the bathroom, set my... My, uh, all the junk out of my pockets, set it on the bathroom counter, opened up the window, and just looked at the dogs barking and barking and barking. And I just picked up my phone, and I literally typed my thoughts, I hate dogs, into a search bar on YouTube. And the rest is history. A lot of people are ready to take that first step, and you might be the spark that they need to get their fire going, because that's what we've got here is a fire. So step outside of your comfort zone. If there are dog nutters in your life, stop being afraid of them. That's your first step. Stop being afraid of dog nutters. Don't be so afraid of losing that connection that you subject yourself to a life of anxiety and fear and loathing that can affect your day today sanity by putting up with dogs.
speak out, call people out on their bull. When they bring a worthless mutt into a grocery store. When they bring their mutt into a restaurant where people eat to spread their fur, their dander, and urine and feces. And lastly, I know a lot of times people will say this, but share these videos. Share videos with people who might already be on the same page as you, but they just need that push in the right direction. Let them know you hate dogs too. Let them know they're not alone. This movement is like a snowball rolling downhill and as it grows, it gathers more and more and more momentum, which makes it grow even more. And the cycle continues. It can only grow faster if you join us and help spread awareness, which will eventually turn into actions. We are intelligent and we are loaded with facts as ammo and we can change this culture. This movement is not going anywhere anytime soon. And I would like to ask you, if you're watching this, to be courageous. Step outside of your comfort zone and share one of my videos. Share one by I Hate Dogs. He's got more content than anybody else. Share one of Chef Mutt Meat's videos. A video by Dogs Are Garbage, a.k.a. Ashley. Or K9 Critic. Or Ranty McDog Hate. He's always a great watch and, or listen. I just about peed my pants laughing the first video that I saw him talking about how they're eating uh, bloody tampons and snotty Kleenexes and I, I love that guy. I mean there are so many great dog channels, anti-dog channels out there. It doesn't matter which one of them you share even if it's not mine. Share one of those videos. Get other people involved. Be strategic and be intelligent. Be intelligent. Use your intelligence, this gift that has been given to you and not to any other creature on this earth. And together, we can change this culture. And this is Four-Legged Plague reminding you to love the sinner and hate the dog. Hate the worthless dog.